Hello guys, welcome to our first class of Unity's Intermediate course. So in this course we're going to be building a FPS game. So for you that doesn't know, FPS stands for First Person Shooter. And we are going to build this game from the very very scratch until you have a full developed game in that field. So FPS is a little bit different from what we did uh, in the previous course in the basic course so the basic was in 2d and this game will be in 3d so it's going to be a little bit different and that's what i am going to teach you guys today how to set up unity for a 3d project and what is basically the difference of 2d and 3d so with your unity hub open this Unity Hub is version 3, so if it seems different, maybe it's because it's not the same version. Let's create a new project. So here I'm going to go with new project. I'm going to select my latest version. In my case, it's 2020.3, but if you have a newer version, it should be fine. And then what I'm going to be creating right here, it's going to be not a template, but from what we see right here it's going to be this core so you click core and you're we're going to select 3d core so this one so from what you can see this is an empty 3d project that uses unity's build in render so we're gonna go with this one the project name will be fps game in my case i'm gonna put fps game class you can even put like intermediate All right so I'm going to create project right here and in unity will start creating our project it may take a while uh, but it's just because it's the first time that we're creating the project and unity is loading up probably you can see uh, you know it's actually loading up because it usually loads up in the primary monitor and that's not the monitor that you are seeing right here. That's my secondary monitor. So just to say a little bit about Unity background uh, before we actually start, Unity 2D and 3D is the same engine. So it doesn't, doesn't actually make any difference inside of Unity. The only difference that exists is that Unity 3D will handle objects in three different dimensions. So you're, we're going to work with X, Y, and Z. So if you remember from our first course, the basic, uh, you already have X, Y, and Z. Uh, this time we're going to use the Z part in every single interaction that we're going to have in our game. In the first game, as it was 2D, we only used X and Y to make interactions. Z doesn't, it wasn't actually really important at that phase, only for rotation. But for 3D games, X, Y, and Z all of them are important because we're going to move and we're going to have collisions and we're going to do a lot of different things with all coordinates. So after Unity loads up, you should have something like this. If you don't have something like this, it's probably because your layout is a little bit different from what I have. So in order to set the layout to exactly of what I have right here, we're going to go on top, you have layout, you should have two by three right here. So maybe your layout is default like this. Thus, it's not actually important to be exactly equal from what I have because we are basically going to use the same windows. But it's cool that you try to be uh, try to follow exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so maybe it's easier to use the same layout, but it's not something that is required. All right. So I'm going to change back from default to 2 by 3 that's my favorite. So it's looking like this. All right, so uh, basically Unity 2D and 3D, they work exactly the same. So you can see right here the windows are the same and they work in the same way. So we still have the scene window, the game view, the game scene, the hierarchy of with all, all objects that we have the project files and the inspector working with the hierarchy or the files. 
So it's not actually different. This is the same thing for 2D because it's the same software. The only difference that you can see is that the map right here, the scene looks slightly different. That's because this is a 3D project. So what we had before uh, on 2D was something like this. So it was a flat view of the world. So this is how we are going to see our game and this is how we are going to actually create the game from scratch. All right. So as the same way, the, the scene view, it's 3D. It doesn't look 3D because we don't have pretty much anything right now. Uh, but it's 3D view, so it's completely different. The camera in 2D, it was orthographic. It means that it doesn't calculate any deepness inside of the game. Uh, and here the camera will work as a perspective camera. So it will have perspective in the game. So it will feel 3D for us. We'll, we can say uh, the deepness of the field of the, the, of the map. All right. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, one thing that I'm going to show to you guys that it's going to be a little bit different because from what I have in 2D, it works slightly different right here in Unity. It's the way that we handle the map and we handle objects in the map. Of course, I'm going to re remind you guys in the future classes when we start building the terrain, when we start to place some items, but just make sure that uh, I'm going to go like more in the tail right now so I make sure that you guys understand that part so in order to create right here you can already see two big difference uh, main camera is still works the same as I said before right now it's perspective it's not orthographic but we have another object right here in the scene it's called directional light and it doesn't exist in 2d because in 2d we don't actually handle lightning by default so this directional light is everything that you're seeing right here so even the color of the the, the sky it's uh, have from the reference the angle of the light so directional light does not uh, you don't actually care about it doesn't actually care about the position uh, it cares about the rotation so it will work like the Sun in our game uh, so you can see that I can move around this it's not gonna make any difference inside of the game uh, and I, I don't have actually any kind of object right here uh, let me add an object so I'm gonna go uh, right here on object game object 3d object and I'm going to add a cube so you can see the cube right here I'm just gonna uh, make the cube on position 0 0 and 0 and maybe move it closer to the camera a little bit all right so I have the cam the cube right here so you can see right here on the directional light that if I move, it doesn't actually have any difference on the cube, the lightning on the cube, neither the sky. But what about if I rotate this? So the way that we move and rotate stuff in 3D right here, it's basically the same as we do in 2D, but right now we need to worry uh, with one more uh, coordinate. So I'm going to use the cube for example, but it actually works with any game object that I have right here. So I'm going to select cube. And first, you can see that I can still use my hand too to move around. So it's the same thing uh, with 2D. I can move around right here with the middle wheel of the mouse. So it's the hand too. And then on the move tool right here, you can see that we have these arrows. So green arrow. If I move, it stands for Y coordinate. So if I click on the green arrow and drag and move along, you can see that the, my Y information right here is actually changing. The red is X and the blue is Z. All right, so you can move around this part. And then another thing that actually is pretty funny and uh, the way that we actually move stuff you can see that I can use my handle tool to move around and my right click my right uh, button on the mouse to rotate my view right here. All right. So I can actually rotate my view with my right uh, button of the mouse. So I'm going to zoom a little bit. And you can see right here that my cube in the center, it have kind of a three different faces right here. You can see it. So if I click on the face, like let's say the blue face, 
it will only move on y and x okay it's not gonna move on z so I can place a little bit like a easier using like this with the red face it will only move on y and z and with the I think it's green but maybe yellow I don't know it will move on z and x right so you can you can place these faces right here to move them along with it so on 2d we don't actually have this because we only have two uh, faces to move so it's only one face so we can pretty much move that part all right so that's move two if we press e or click right here you will have the rotation too so it works the same way as 2d all right but right now we can actually rotate in every single coordinate not only z as it was in 2d so you can play around and rotate the object right here I'm just gonna go back with rotation 0 0 so I don't make a mess right here all right R2 works the same way so I can move them in a lot of different coordinates and on the center proportional as the same way as to as 2d so let me go back to scale all right and then that's it W we have this Ooh, I think yeah all right, W, you, ha you have move to uh, rotation. Ooh. Yeah, I'm actually moving the, the scale right here for some reason. So W, we have scale to uh, move to. E, we have rotate to. R, we have scale to. And that's pretty much what we're going to use further. But we also have T2, where you can move it, I uh, guess, a little bit easier in one axis only. And we have the all the tools together I don't really use that much but you can move rotate and scale uh, and with the same tool so you don't need to worry about uh, moving through tools I guess I, I, I prefer to actually use each tool for its own purpose I don't really like this one but uh, it's with you you can choose which one you like all right so play around try to make some cubes around the map try to move them that try to rotate them scale them because we're gonna use this a lot when we start building the map uh, mainly on the next classes where we start building the terrain and places some 3D objects. So it's going to be important for us to actually uh, be building this. All right, so that's our cube. And going back to directional light right now, right now you already know that you can move directional light and rotate and scale it. The directional light is very important. The important part actually with the directional light is the angle so like it doesn't really matter the position that it is so you can test right here I can move it to the map and you can see that it's not gonna make any kind of difference inside of the game but if I select my rotate tool and start moving with the angles you can see that the it's going to make a difference inside of my game right and I can play around with this you can see the cube right now so it's the fun the funny part is that actually you can actually you can try to make some kind of it's 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 faking the sun so you can see night you can even see the sun right now like let's say that I'm actually making it uh, the sun like some sunset or is we're gonna fix some kind of the sun so you can see right here the sun there you see it's only for the angle all right so directional light is going to be important when we start building the map because this will give the feeling of the game so let's say for example that I want to make a very like a midday game I would go like this but if I want to make a sunset maybe I would try to do something like this all right but it's not changing the color so here on directional light you can change a lot of different stuff you can change the way that is the light in this case is actually the light component is directional that's why it's directional light but you can you could change to other kind of lights we're not gonna see this right now uh, we're gonna see this further for now just leave it directional so directional as I said before is going to be like the Sun so depending on the angle is going to have a different kind of the way that the lights going to hit the objects going to be different depending on the angle kind of mimicking the Sun we can change the color 
so it, right now it's almost a very very light um, yellowish so it's actually picking like some midday sun uh, but it could be um, as I said before like uh, with the sunset it could be something like more reddish more red and maybe if you are in the midnight it could be something more bluish all right so yeah you can make the game uh, have different kind of feelings only based on the color of the directional light so every single object it will respect the color of the light so even though my object is white depending on the color that my directional light have it will have a different kind of hue so like if it's it's if i have like this cube this cube is gray but if i you, you will see later as i change the color of the light it's going to change the filling and also the color of the object so this will be very important when we start to build in the map because we can set the map to a day night map or a night uh, night time map and it will change completely the feeling of the game so maybe for an fps action we want it to be on like a daylight so we can see our enemies better and something like this. But if you are trying to make it like a horror game, some like a FPS horror game, it would be very cool to be at night so we can give this feeling of darkness, this feeling of like horror. All right. So this is the color. Let's change that later. And of course, you can change also the intensity so I can put like two or 23, something like this. I don't usually change this much. Uh, but you could and the rest is with how it's going to handle shadows right now yeah we, do, we can pretty much see any kind of shadow uh, let me see if i can make some i think this shadow will be easier to see later when we have actually um uh, like trees and other objects in the map but just as an example you don't need to do this right now i'm just going to show you as an example i'm going to put a plane right here so 3d object uh, plane I'm going to I'm going to put this plane right below the cube so you can see the shadow of it all right so make it bigger okay so you can see the shadow right here right the shadow exists because we have shadows in our game so we can have no shadows so it's going to be easier to run but it's not gonna be very good looking because this feels a little bit strange you can have hard shadows like this and you can have soft shadows like this you can see the difference between hard shadows and soft shadows hard shadows is way less I would say detailed you can see like almost the, 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 the line right here is not a straight line which soft shadows is way better right so soft shadows if the highest quality no shadows is the lowest quality so and and as well you can see that if I change the angle of the direction of, of the directional light the shadow goes with it and you can have a pretty cool feeling of like sunset or something like this All right you can see the sun right there pretty cool so depending on how many objects you have depending on the platform that you're making the game you may not want shadows or you may want shadows it always depends on which platform the game will be running. This game will be running into a computer, so we can have soft shadows. Uh, but if you have like a, a computer that may not be the best computer, you may want to have no shadows uh, because it's going to be a little bit hard to build the game and to run the game for your computer as we add more models into the game. So that's actually important. I'm gonna live with soft shadows and I'm gonna show you guys uh, just before we end the class two, uh, three different feelings actually of the game. So this right now would be like a daylight game. That's uh, that's what we are going to aim for in the beginning but we can always change later. All right, so that's going to be our daylight game. Uh, and let's say that I want to go with a sunset. Then I would choose some kind of a reddish color something like this and I would put my camera in the background like this right maybe even more red you can see right here like the red it doesn't affect the, the sky of course but it affects the way that the kid like the, the lightning is showing up is showing up right there 
and even if I have something like this. So as you can see, this lightning actually gives kind of a sunset feeling. So depending on the game that you want to make, this is can be what you're being for. Uh, if we change this light into a kind of a bluish and more darker light, something like this, we can have kind of some, maybe some night feeling, something like this. You would actually need to change more things in order to make it darker, but it gives already this feeling, let's say that it's a very clear night, something like this. You could use this color to create some kind of a clear night feeling, so it's going to be very clear, but at the same time, we'll have this feeling of a horror. So yeah, lightning plays a big part in the game, and it's going to be easier to see how it actually interfects uh, the feeling after we add more models in the game itself. So uh, from next class and on, we're going to start creating the terrain and we're going to start putting more 3D models in the game. So it's going to be easier to actually see how, he, uh, how everything uh, works together with the lightning and with amount of intensity in the game. And as I said before, we're going to try to do a daylight game. So that's what we're going to be